Good evening, and welcome to Saints Joseph and Francis Xavier Parish. This evening, we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Our readings begin at number 1123 in the Red Books. That's number 1123. And our celebrants for this Mass are Father Sheridan and Father Harnett. We invite you to stand and join in singing our entrance hymn. It's called, Hear, O Lord, and the music sheets are in your pews. Hear, O Lord. The sound of my call Hear, O oh Lord, and have mercy My soul is longing for the glory of you Hear, O oh Lord, and have Why do I no longer feel like I've a place to stay? Oh, take me where someone will care, so fear will go away. The sound of my call, hear, O oh Lord, and have mercy. My soul is longing for the glory of you, O oh, hear, O oh Lord, and answer me. In you, O oh Lord. I place my cares and all my troubles too. Perhaps someday the sun will rise and I will live anew. Hear, O oh Lord, the sound of my call. For the glory of you, hear, O oh Lord, and answer me. Oh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this liturgy as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, you and I gathered again this evening. We gather as people of faith. We gather as people who continue the wonderful season of Lent, the Lord in our lives, to help us and strengthen us so that we might be more his faithful people. And so as we begin to celebrate this this evening, we first pause for a moment to call to mind the Lord's continuing goodness graciousness and forgiveness of our sins. And together now we pray the confitier. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your mother and father that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord, your God, is giving to you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Come, bring out your joy to the Lord. Hail the God who saves us. Let us come now before our God with songs. Let us hail the Lord. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before God who made us. For he is our God, we his people, the flock that is led by God's hand. If today you hear 
God's voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered they had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it very well. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel offers us an important corrective for many of us. By this I mean a corrective to our picture of Jesus. For many of us, Jesus is just a nice guy, always gentle, always kind, no harsh words, putting up with all kinds of behavior, good or bad. As the saying goes, going along to get along. The perennial nice guy. Suppose there, I suppose there is some truth to that, but it's not the whole truth. Nice guys don't end up on a cross. 
And if we listen again to today's gospel reading, we hear nice guys don't cause trouble, especially in a sacred place like the temple. Today's gospel is known as the cleansing of the temple. We need to hear part of it, I think, again. Jesus found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a cord of whips and drove them all out of the temple area. He spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And those who sold doves, he said to them, take these out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. When people thought about what Jesus did later on, they remembered the words of scripture, seal for your house has consumed me. Seal's a very strong word, isn't it? Seal means being on fire about something. And for Jesus, he always had zeal for the things of God. And this incident tells us that he had zeal for the temple. The temple is that sacred place where the Jewish people meet their God. And Jesus cleanses it. He cleans it. And he cleans it because it has been turned into, his, as he says, a marketplace. A place for buying and selling, polluted. Simply put, it needed to be cleaned out. And Jesus was the one who was going to do that. When the religious leaders, as we heard, asked him, why are you doing this? And what authority are you doing this? He referred not to a physical building like the temple, but rather the temple of his body, which will be raised from the dead, he said. During Lent, we hear this gospel passage, and it very well can refer to us also, to the temple, which is us, and what Jesus can do for us. During Lent, we can become aware of the clutter in our lives, not sheep, not oxen, not doves, but other stuff, things that prevent us from being holy people. We can become aware of the ways that we act. We can become aware of the way we treat one another. We can be aware, become aware of the first strike that we have when someone does something that we don't like. We immediately, for many of us anyway, lash out. We can be, in a word, aware of sin in our lives. What is the sin in my life and in your life? And we might look at the first reading that we just heard read, the reading of the Ten Commandments, and see how we're doing in regards to those Ten Commandments. After all, the Ten Commandments come to us in Scripture, and that means that they come from the hand of God, that the ways that God would have us live. The Ten Commandments are very, they're not just arbitrary. They come from the hand of God. They're what God asks of you and me in our lives. The point is to allow, to welcome Jesus into our lives so that he can cleanse the temple, which is our lives. As I mentioned a bit earlier, Jesus is more than just a nice guy. He comes with power. He comes to cleanse and heal. And in our second reading, St. Paul clearly talks about the, the power of Jesus. He says this, But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. That's who Christ is, the power of God and the wisdom of God. And let is a time for you and for me to allow that power to allow that wisdom of God in Christ to allow it to be more a part of our lives. Let us together now stand. And as people of faith, let us share our faith together 
as we pray using the words <coughs> of the <coughs> pardon me of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In faith now, we turn to the, to the Lord who hears our prayers and our petitions. <clears throat> our response today is, merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, for the grace to be a light of hope and salvation to those seeking direction as they journey through the Lenten season, we pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, for the wisdom and perseverance to create structures that promote life, peace, dignity, and safety for all. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our parish who are being confirmed, may they be guided by the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share the riches of their faith in love and service to one another. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, especially the sick of our parish, for Art Devereaux, for John Kujua, for Brother Roman Paul Berceau, may they find comfort and healing through our loving support and continued prayers. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Davida Louch, and Dorothy Daly Kelly and Jim Daly, and those who are victims of violence or natural disasters. May they rest in eternal peace and happiness. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For those held in special intention at this Mass, Kenneth McBride, we pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we raise up to you these and all of our many petitions and prayers. We ask that you hear them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just have a brief announcement at this time. And again, we're grateful for your continued support of the parish. And there will be a second collection this evening that will be for our sharing parish in Haiti, Immaculate Conception.
pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, who is our Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive one another through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously, graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We pray now together using the words that Jesus himself has given to us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another now some sign of the Lord's peace. Peace. Peace and peace. On this day, we truly speak at a mundi, misere nobis. On this day, we truly speak at a mundi, misere nobis. On this day, which all is pecata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing our communion hymn, Precious Lord, take my hand. It's number 826 in the Red Books, number 826.
precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me. Set your heart on the higher gifts, on the things that come from your Maker in heaven. These three things are all that remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest is love. If I speak with the tongues of the living and of angels, but speak without love, I am only brass without song, an empty noise on the wind. Set your heart on the higher gifts, on the things that come from your Maker in heaven. 
heaven. These three things are all that remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest is love. And if I understand every mystery, having wisdom, but think without love, had I faith to scatter the hills, I am nothing at all. Set your heart on the higher gifts, on the things that come from your Maker in heaven. These three things are all that remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest is love. of things yet hidden in heaven, and our nourished while still on earth, with the bread that comes from on high. We humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the Almighty God bless us all, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hope you all have a very relaxing and enjoyable Sunday and a very good week. Mass is ended now. Let us all go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, Lord of All Hopefulness, number 758. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares can destroy, be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all kindliness, Lord of all grace, your hands swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our homing and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm. Be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Hey, thanks, Chris. Hey, hey, Kevin. Good, how are you?